then I'm going to create a new blank project in Spark AR. So um, let's check, what are we going to start out with? We're first going to um, import the files be true and um, we're going to make the background move we're going to make the character your hero in this case my bird we're going to make sure that it actually moves uh, um, together with your face i think we're also going to um, create um, the collider movement and then we deal with the logic in the second part okay okay so first of all we click on object we are going to add a face tracker and uh, after that, we're going to add a new object. It doesn't have to be part, uh, it doesn't have to be child to the face tracker. So I'm going to add an object, which is going to be a null. You're going to have to add a null object and we're not dealing with rectangles, canvases, planes. Well, we're going to deal with planes, but at this point, we're going to add null objects. Um, and then let's say this is going to be um, background. Hip, background. Right, and to this null object, we're going to add a plane. Here we go. And to this plane, we're going to add a material. This is going to be the material of the background. Here we go. You click on, oh, first of all, the shader type, you change it to flat. And then you choose the file background. This is it. Now, you're going to have to um, scale this up. So I just go here and then I do it with uh, the arrows. I think this looks cool. Good enough. Uh, we're kind of going to move it like this. And then once that's ready, you're going to add a new object, which will be again a now a null object. You guessed it. And then we're going to say uh, game. And then to this, we're going to add again another, sorry, here. We're going to add a new null object. And this will be for the um, character. I'm very good at typing. And then we add a plane. This I'm going to name bird. The bird is my character in this case. We're going to add material, create new material. I'm going to name it because otherwise I get confused. Standard, we're going to, the shader type is going to be flat again. And after you choose the file and that will be the bird. Pretty pretty. I'm going to scale this up once again um, by using the arrows. Thing. this should be fine and then after we are going to add an other null object and this one is going to be for the colliders or obstacle i'm going to add only one collider in this case now add plane um yeah collider again again we Create new material. I call it creatively collider once again. Shader type to flat, and we're going to choose the file. Let's make it the angry bolt, the angry lightning. Fine. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. Um, so I think we've imported everything we need at this point. Um, the game over banner um, picture will come later. And at this point, we're going to uh, move into the patch editor. So make it a little bit like this. And then we're going to make sure that we animate the background. Um, right, so we have to think first, how would we like this game to start? And usually it goes with tap on the screen, right? And then once the screen tab is there, we're going to add a switch. And then we're going to add value. 
and then we're going to add a boss and then we're going to add a switch again oh. there we go and this is where the fun begins we're going to add loop animation and then we're going to add transition cool all right so let's take a look at it um we're going to have to look at the transition at this point because this is going to make sure that our background image is going to move the way we want it to move so let me just check so here we go we're going to check how we want the background to move in my case my background is going to move on the y-axis because i want it to move vertical which means it's going to move uh from the top to the bottom see this is how i want this to move no not, this, not like this but this and then it's going to loop the whole time like this so um we're going to have to look uh, at the transition patch as you can see, it has um, uh, the vector numbers here, the start and the end positions of the axes. Let me pull it down. This seems fine. You can also just check what uh, the data is here. In my case, it's going to be minus um, 75. So we're going to work with this. So Five, and then we're going to set the Z to zero and the X to zero because our image does not move along these axes. Axes, if that's the right word. And then, in order to make sure that this transition affects the position of the background, you're going to make sure that you stand on the background null object, so not the plane, but the null object. And then you're going to move here. And you click on this little arrow next to the position and then we're going to attach it to the transition and this way it's going to move the the background itself so let's see uh, i'm going to switch to my facetime camera uh, restart play oh that's me and we're going to have to change this here to simulate touch and if we're lucky then it's going to start the animation oh that's going very very quick so we're going to have to amend the duration i say six and we restart and play once again okay this is friendlier okay okay that's cool um i'm going to group some of these together because otherwise we're going to have a lot of patches here so it can get very messy so i'm going to group it and then we say background animation cool now what should be in the next one okay the next one is going to be the task that we're going to make sure that the character of the bird is actually moving the same way my face is moving so what are we gonna do we're going to add a uh, going to move to the face tracker and then we're going to create a producer patch i'm gonna zoom in a little bit and we're going to need the 3d position of the of our face and then we're going to attach it to the unpack patch this is going to make sure that it um, analyzes um, the movement of the face. And then, uh, because we want our face, hold on. Because, oh. because we want the bird to move along with uh, the, the movement of the face. So you actually want um, this patch to pick up the, um, the data along the x-axis so the head rotation is the one we need i'm going to stop it here and uh, we're going to add a patch 
from here, which is gonna be the pack pack patch. We're going to move over to the um, to the character null uh, null object, and we're going to make a patch from the position by clicking on the arrow here and connect it to the pack. And if all is well, I'm gonna start the video now and see if it actually moves. Oh yeah, it moves the same way my head moves. So that's cool. That's exactly what we wanted. I'm going to stop here. That's a great image of me, nice. Okay, so in order to have the collider values right, I'm going to share a patch with you. Actually this patch, um, I got it from um, uh, a video of Maru Studio. I'm going to link it into the description box. And I used this patch so far, but there was some kind of change again in Spark AR and the la latest update of the, um, of the program itself kind of had an issue with it. So I actually rebuilt this patch and I'm going to share it with you. Um, this one, um, this is the patch that I'm going to share with you. See it appears here and then you're going to have to drag it here. Now let's take a look. First of all, you're going to have to convert it to patch group in order to enter your values in here. As you can see, it focuses on the X and the Y. They said it's not playing a role in here. We're going to have to figure out the values that we have to fill in here. So collider, you click on the null object and I'm going to check out how we actually want this collider to move. So we want it to move from the top to the bottom. So this seems like a nice place for it. And this is going to give us the starting position along the Y axis. And you have to fill it here, the Y movement start. I'm usually taking off <laughs> everything after the two decimals. And let's check where we want this to end. This seems fine. So minus 30. Good. And then we're going to have a minimum and a maximum random value along the X axis. And the point of it is because we want this little mean lightning bolt to move like, you know, anywhere between these values so that your character, your hero is actually being challenged to dodge it, which means that you have to be moving your head very quickly. Okay, okay. Um, so this seems like a nice position as a minimum. So it's mm, minus zero four. And Mm. And this seems fine, so that's... Uh, should I go a little bit further? Nah, not really. I think 006 should be fine. Okay. Now, in order to have them connected, you guessed it already, you will have to stand on the null object, null object of the collider. And we're going to have to extract um, or make a patch for the position of the collider. So here is an output code value and you connect it to the collider's position. As you see, it already disappeared. And we're going to have to make sure that uh, this one is actually connected to the screen tab, which means that once you tap on the screen, it's going to start not only the animation of the background, oh, but also the, um, uh, also the movement of the colliders. So we see it at the switch as well. Smart enough to know it. And we're going to have to restart it and then we're going to have to click on play to see my face again. Here's the bird moving and we're going to click to see if it actually starts the collider. Oh, here we go. Is it actually moving? Yeah, it does randomize the the lightning, but it 
tend to get stuck a little bit on more on the left side. Oh, I would have died now. Okay, okay. So, um, well, this is it for now. We're actually going to continue from this point in the next episode when we're going to add the logic to this whole thing going on here. So I hope to see you in the next tutorial and um, have a good day. Bye.